In this example, we're going to take the fleur de lis model that we created in a previous session and we're going to look at how we can set up our material and toolpaths in the software in order for us to go ahead and cut that out on our CNC machine. So let's go to File, Close. So let's go and open an existing file. From the project folder, I'm going to open the fleur de lis model.crv 3D file, press Open. I'm going to come over to the 2D view control and use the option to tile the windows vertically. That way I can see the 2D view on the left and I can see the 3D view on the right hand side. And so there's a couple of things that I need to do before we go ahead and create the toolpaths. The first thing is I need to have a vector that represents the boundary of our model. Now in most cases that means that we need a vector that will go around the outside of your model. You'll remember when we created this model we had a vector in order for us to create the base shape. So we already have a vector here, so we're going to use that as our vector boundary. And then the second thing that I need to check is the entire shape of the part. Uh, so we just want to make sure that it's going to be appropriate with whatever size material that we're going to work with. So if we go into the modeling tab, and then if we use this option here, to scale the Z height of the model. What that does, it looks at all the visible components and it will tell us the maximum Z heights, the minimum Z heights. We can see currently that's at 0.46. So I'm just going to round that up to half an inch. So I'm going to use the option to set exact height and we're going to bring that up to 0.5 and press apply. Okay, we can close that, okay that and we've come out of there. So we've scaled it, we've got our vector boundary. So now we're ready to go over to the toolpaths tab and start creating the toolpaths. So let's go over to the 2D view control. I'm going to use this option here to switch to the toolpaths tab. Okay, so let's just undo our drawing and our modeling tabs and it's brought out our toolpaths tab on the right hand side. Now the first thing that we need to do is our material setup, which is this option up here. And this is how we relate the part in the software to our machine and the material that we plan to cut. So we're going to use this option to set. And so we're just going to work our way down the material setup form. So we'll set our Z0 to be on top of the material block. Our material thickness is going to be 3 quarters of an inch. We can see that our XY datum position is currently in the centre. We can see that by looking at this red square in the 2D view and these arrows in the 3D view here. Now I like my XY position to be in the centre at the start of an initial job to help me design the part when we're drawing vectors. However, when it comes to the toolpaths and cutting that out, I like to move that down to the lower left hand corner. That way all my X and Y values will be positive. And now there's no real right or wrong way of doing this, it's just whatever is appropriate for your own setup. So next in the form is the model position in the material. So this is where we can position our model in our material block. So we can use this slider here, so this light brown area represents our model thickness. And so we can slide it up or down wherever we want in the material block or we could put in some specific values. I'd like to have a small gap above our model of 0 0.05 and that's just so that we avoid any flat spots when we're cutting that part. We can see then that our model, model thickness is half an inch and so the gap below is 0 0.2 so we're just going to have an extra stock below our model there of 0 0.2 and so all of those values added up add up to our material thickness. Let me move on to our rapid Z gaps above the material. So this is the distance that the tool will pull out to move to a new position in the toolpath if it needs to. So we must make sure that these values are high enough to clear any clamps or obstructions on our material block. And then finally we have our home and start positions. And so this is the location that your tool will go to before it starts the toolpath. So in our case we're going to have that x0, y0 which is the corner here and the z is going to be a quarter of an inch above the z0 on top of the material block there. And so once we're happy with those we can press OK and then we can see a summary of that material setup at the top of our toolpaths tab there. So now the material setup correct we can start to calculate the toolpaths. Now if you plan to actually machine the example shown in this tutorial, 
and it's very important that you calculate all the toolpaths using parameters and settings that are safe and appropriate for your particular machine, the tooling that you have available and the material that you are using. And so the first toolpath we're going to create is the roofing toolpath. And so the roofing toolpath allows us to use a larger tool to hog out the majority of the material so that it's safe for us to go back in with a smaller tool to do a finish cut. So we'll make sure that we've got our boundary vector selected and I have here. And then we're going to come over and we're going to go over to this option here to create a 3D roofing toolpath. Okay, so we'll just work our way down the form. So we're going to start by choosing our tool. So we go into this select option here and this will bring up the tool database and this has all of our tools listed in here and we can add new tools or make edits to the tools that we already have to make them more suitable for our setup. Okay, so I'd like to use a quarter inch end mill in this case. We can check the parameters and various values in here and if you're happy we can press OK. What we can do then is we can look at editing the parameters for that specific tool for this specific tool path by going on this edit option here. And so I could go in, alter the path step, feeds and speeds, and anything that I alter in here is just for this toolpath only, and so it won't affect the information stored in the tool database. Now I'm happy with all the settings in here, so I'm going to press OK. Then we can move on to the next section, which is the machine limit boundary. So this is the boundary that we're going to specify. So we can choose the model boundary, the material boundary, or the selected vectors. Now as I already have a vector, I'm going to use the selected vector option. Then we move on to the boundary offset. And what this does, it allows us to offset the boundary vector that we've got selected to allow the tool to roll down past the sides of the part by default, for the 3D roughing and finishing toolpaths, the software will bring the centre of the tool to the vector that we've got here. And on a raised job like this, what we actually want is the tool to come past so that it will machine the sides with the side of the tool. So we'll put in a value that's equal to at least the radius of the tool plus the machining allowance, so we'll put in a value of 0.16. Now if we were creating a dish shape, we wouldn't have a boundary offset in this case as we'd want the center of the tool to stop at that vector so it only really applies to raised shapes like this so then we move on to the machining allowance so the machine allowance is of skin of material that the software will leave on the model after we've done the roughing so we make sure that we've got some material left for when we come to do the finishing pass and so that means that it makes it less likely for the roughing tool, uh, which uses larger part and more aggressive parameters, to chip at the model. So we'll leave a small skin of material in there of 0 0.03. Then we can move on to the roughing strategy. And this is the way that the tool is going to move over the 3D model in order for it to hog away at the material. So we could choose a Z-level strategy, and this will cut the part into Z slices determined by the pass depth of the tool. So if we go to the edit option up here, we can check the pass depth of that tool. We can see it's currently set to an eighth of an inch. And so the software would cut eighth inch slices through the model and do a 2D toolpath on each of those in order to hog out the steps. So I'll just press OK there. Or we could use this 3D raster option. And this will follow the shape of the model rather than do these slices, but that can be very time consuming. So I'm going to choose the Z level option. And then we'll raster X, and I can also um, raster parallel to the Y axis if I wanted to. And then I'm going to profile this last. And so it will raster the pattern first and then follow around the profile of that slice on the 3D model. Again, there's no right or wrong way of doing this. It's just doing what's most appropriate for your particular material and the job that you're doing. And then we have the ramp plunge moves. So if you wanted to, you could ramp in at an angle rather than plunging in vertically. If you wanted to do that, you could check this option here and apply the distance. For this example, I'm just going to leave that. 
and then we can come over and name our tool path. So I'm going to call that 3D Roughing and just to help me remember which tool I'm using I'm just going to put in 0.25 EM for end mill and then we'll press calculate and we can see that the software has automatically opened the preview form for me here and we can see the toolpath represented by these blue lines and so if we come over here we can use the option to preview the toolpath so we see that in a virtual piece of material I can also look at altering the appearance of this I'm just going to stick with the Canadian maple and then we're going to go and preview the selected toolpath and that's just going to animate that in a virtual piece of material there I can maximize the 3D view and so the software has given me a rather accurate representation of how that will look on my machine and we can see all the different steps that were cutting based on that Z-level strategy that we used ok so once I'm happy with that I'm going to close this down and then we're going to go and tile our windows so I'll press page up on the keyboard so we can see the 2D and the 3D view we'll just put that back in Z and so we're now ready to go ahead and create our finishing toolpath so we've still got our vector selected from uh, the previous toolpath that we used so we're going to go over to the 3D finishing toolpath and so the first thing we need to do is select a tool so we must make sure that we have a tool that's small enough to replicate all of the detail that's visible within that part there and we can see that we currently have an 8th inch ball nose selected that is actually the tool that I'd like to use so I'm just going to go over to this edit option here just to check some of the values and parameters that are uh, in, within this form here one of the uh, important settings to check is this step over here and so the step over is the distance between each pass that the tool will take so the smaller this value is then the finer the finish will be resulting in a longer uh, time for that tool path to cut out and so most people use a value of 10% of the ball nose's tool's diameter in order for us to get a good finish so we'll make sure that's set to 10% then we can go and check the feeds and speeds in this example and it just depends on the material that you are using so here I'm just going to up my feed rate to 100 and then I'm going to alter my plunge to 50 and that's just assuming that this will be safe for the material that I'm using ok then so we'll press OK and because I use the edit option it's only changed the settings of that tool for this particular toolpath alone and it hasn't altered anything within that tool database then we move on to the machine limit boundary for this we're going to use the selected vector again the boundary offset is going to be a little bit past the radius of the tool so I'll make that 0 0.08 and then for the area machine strategy or the pattern that the tool is going to follow when it does its finish cut we have the option to either use an offset or a raster strategy now the raster strategy just goes back and forth over the part in straight lines with a step over at the end of each pass now as we're working with an oval shape it will be better for me to use the offset option as this will follow the shape of the oval and give me a nicer result around the border and around the middle there we can then choose the cut direction, climb or conventional if you're not sure on what they are then we'd recommend you looking at the reference manual and then here we can name our part so again we're going to go call that 3D finish 0.125BN for ball nose and then I'm going to press calculate here and that's just going to work that out for me there ok and we can see that we have the toolpath visible in the 3D view there so let's go and maximize the 3D view we can see that oval pattern uh, visible there so let's just preview that toolpath that's just going to show us how that's going to cut that out on our machine ok so I'm happy with that, I'm happy with the way that that looks so we'll close that down now so now we're ready to run our profile toolpath in order for us to cut the part out of the material block so we'll come over and close this preview form down and then we'll press page up on the keyboard to tile our windows and so we've still got our vector selected so with that selected we're going to go over to toolpath operations and use the profile option going to put in a start depth of 0 
and a cut depth of three quarters of an inch. Remember we want to cut all the way through to get that out of the material block there. And then we can come on to the tool options. We can see we currently have a quarter inch end mill selected. That's the tool I'd like to use. We can also see that that's going to cut that in six passes. And so what we could do is just check the uh, pass depths of this tool by going to the edit option here. Okay, and we can see we've got a pass depth of an eighth of an inch, so that fits in six times in the three quarter inch material. So what I could do is I could look at editing the pass depth and I could do that here or I could just cancel that and use this option here to edit passes. And this allows me to manually change the passes myself either by adding new ones or deleting ones that we already have in the form there. So if I wanted to I could decide to cut each pass at a quarter of an inch. So what I'd do is I'd delete those extra passes. So I'd delete this one here by pressing delete I'd delete this one here and the same for this one here. So I'm just left with a quarter, a half and then three quarters. So I'm happy with that so I'll press OK and we can see that those passes have been updated here. So we're going to machine the vectors outside so it's going to follow the vector along the outside there and then we can come down again for the direction, climb more conventional uh, if you're not sure what they are, then we'd recommend that you're looking at the reference manual for those options there. And if we wanted to, we could add an additional offset if we wanted to overcut or undercut the part. I want to cut exactly to that vector, so I'm just going to leave that at zero. Last pass, if we wanted to do a separate last pass, we could do by checking this option here. For this example, I'm just going to leave that blank. And then we can move on to various advanced options for this toolpath. So we could look at adding tabs to hold the part in place. We could look at adding leads or ramps to govern how the tool feeds into the part that we're cutting. If we wanted to, um, if we had uh, more than one vector, we could change the order. And then if we had corners in our part, uh, then we could look at doing sharp cuts on them. But it doesn't apply in this case as we have a smooth oval vector. So one of the things I would like to do is add tabs to my toolpath. So here I can specify the length and thickness of my tabs. So I'm going to give that a length of half an inch, thickness of 0.15. I would also like to create 3D tabs. So rather than having a rectangular tab like we have in the image here, I'd like to have the 3D tab so we have more of a triangular shape. So the tool's going to come in and ramp up at the height that we specify and then it's going to ramp back down again and this is actually quicker for us to cut and it's easier for us to remove as well so I'm going to check that option there and then we can go and edit the tabs so we can add tabs at a constant number so we specify how many we want in there or we could use a uh, constant distance between the tabs so I'm going to go with constant number of four so I'm going to say add tabs and we can see it's already automatically added those tabs in the 2D view there so then I can look at moving them if I didn't like the positions of them I could click on it to delete it and then re-click on the vector to apply a new tab until I'm happy with the positionings of my tabs. Okay, so I'm happy with those, so we'll close that down and then we'll go and call that profile 0.25 EM for NMIL and press calculate. And so that's opened up our toolpath preview. So if I just maximize the 3D view and we'll just take a look at that. I'm just going to tilt that a little bit. We can see that my previous toolpath, the roofing toolpath, has cut quite a lot of material past uh, the edge of the part, and that's due to that boundary offset that we put in there. So if I tilt that, we can see uh, that we're actually going to be cutting air for the first two passes in this profile toolpath. So it would be a good idea for me to change my toolpath to reduce the amount of air that we're actually cutting here. And if I wanted to double check that I was definitely cutting the inside of the material that I had already machined away, then would go and preview that toolpath. And then we've, what we can see here is we can see that that uh, ridge is visible around the outside. So I'm definitely going to be cutting air for the first two passes. So I'm just going to use the option to undo last. And then I'm going to go into the profile toolpath. And I'm just going to go and edit the passes. Okay, so I'm going to delete the first two, so we'll say delete and delete again, 
press OK. I'm just going to come down here. I've noticed that I haven't put the 5 in my name there. So we've got profile 0.25 and mil. Calculate that again. And then let's preview that toolpath. And we can see that that's OK to cut that in one pass. And we can also see the tabs in place where we position them in the 2D view. So I'm happy with that. So at this stage, it'd be a good idea to now go ahead and save out the toolpaths so we can run those on our CNC machine. So we'll close that down, and then we'll select our 3D roughen toolpath, use this option here to save the toolpath. Okay, so we'll check that the toolpath listed is the correct one that we'd like to save out. Then we'll go and find our post processor. So we'll go in there and select uh, the appropriate one for our machine. And then we'll go ahead and save that toolpath. So again, we'll make sure that the tool is in the name. So it makes sense to us when we go and run that on our machine. And then we just go ahead and save that. And then we do so for the rest of those toolpaths. And so that really completes this tutorial where we've looked at taking the fleur de -lis model that we created in a previous session and we've looked at how to create the toolpaths to cut the part on our CNC machine. We looked at how to set up the material and how to run the toolpaths to cut out the 3D parts. So now it would be a good idea to go and save this file. So we'll go over to File, Save As and then in the Project folder we're just going to call that Toolpath. So Fleur de Lis, Toolpath, Save, and then you can access that from the project folder. 